Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, <laughs> and I'm sitting in a deep pit in the uh, middle of this very cheap mattress. So I don't know. I got a little too enamored of ordering everything off of Amazon.com, so I was like, I'm getting a new uh, mattress, and I just <laughs> whatever, three hundred bucks, whatever. This is you can't sit on this thing. You just sink all the way through. Um, but anyway, uh, I just uh, have to say that I made it through this. Do you remember when you're in like uh, elementary school and you graduate to chapter books and you're all uh, proud of yourself? This is basically that in reverse. I've, <laughs> I'm now reading comics and it's an excruciating ordeal where it feels like I should get some sort of prize or at least a, a, a gold star on something. Like I finished it. You're not supposed to finish it. Nobody reads this. I think its sales are like 5,000 per month, but oh my gosh. So, oh, I almost said, <laughs> I almost said the secret project. Wow. Okay, so uh, I was working on secret, secret project yesterday and I wrote one scene, one scene, seven pages, and it took me about half of my work day. Now, that's actually a lot slower than I've ever worked before because one of the things, you know, I read the reviews and I'm like, I really, really, really want, you know, the next things that I'm working on to really knock it out of the park writing wise. And I think one thing I need to do is just take this more seriously, treat it more like a job and, you know, not, you know, I'm doing a million things and I'm also going to write today. Like, Writing yesterday was the focus of the entire day. It didn't take the entire day, but it was a focus. And I was very, very consciously trying to be better than I've ever been, trying to match up to the uh, another writer on the project who, in my opinion, is turning in career best work. Um, so I, I liked, like, the thing is, it's actually a fairly fun, you know, it's like popcorn entertainment type of story with some, you know, emotional beats to it. But, uh, Man, I'm just taking it. I, I, I like. I I really want this to be good. I respect the work and the and the creators and the uh, the um, the characters, but this is just the opposite. All this is is it's basically we are into forty seven issues. We are gonna have fifty uh, issues, and this is it. Ryan North thinks he's really cute, totes adorbs, and uber scuber super duper witty. That's it. All this is is 50 issues of Ryan North's ego. And he's the most basic bitch middle-aged hipster ever. Every failed joke from the last five years, he does it. The cutesy pie thing where people who on, are on Twitter who don't have friends in real life, so they imitate the way people talk in Joss Whedon shows from 20 years ago with a little bit of Scott Pilgrim. And oh my gosh, it's just, it's just hideous. So let's start with the cover. This is the cover in the unbeatable Squirrel Girl. It's, um, it says, you don't want to miss with the Squirrel Scouts. Actually has absolutely nothing to do with this issue. And they're actually looking for this character. By the way, let's just drink in Doreen. Let's just drink this in. This is, of course, Erica Henderson because, uh, you know, Marvel makes decisions out of spite. Erica Henderson was controversial. So by all means, keep her as the cover artist. Just look at this. Look at this. This is, again, contempt. One of the things that always comes down to with SJWs is contempt. They absolutely hate hate the fans they hate the medium you know monthly comics and they hate the characters they think they're all stupid so but what if someone's accidentally enjoying something you know let's say you actually had guru hero guru hero guru hero guru, guru hero was supposed to be their art team and then they went with erica henderson and Tell me this isn't just Erica Henderson just giving a middle finger to everyone. Oh, you like things to be visual appealing? Oh, you do? Oh, you, you like that, huh? You'd like that? 
Yeah, well, guess what? This ain't M and F and Burger King. Look at this hand. Look at this gigantic man hand. Look at this face where at every single point, Erica said, how can I make every single facial feature the least attractive? Giant misshapen ears, weirdly small, ugly mouth, uh, 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 nose and mouth area, bulbous head, and uh, just a gigantic man hand. Just a giant steel worker's hand. No, 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 whatever. Just... <laughs> Look at this guy. That's not even, it's not even drawn. So even though I said this is terrible, you can see how it's like obviously a finished drawing. This is the type of drawing you do when a character is way in the background. Oh, I also love how she's just staring off at nothing and she's, whatever, nothing matters. Um, so I'm not, this is absolutely torturous. It's just squirrel girl bragging about herself. And then, um, okay, hey, do you remember the thing that I heard of that I love because I heard of it? It's, th that is it. That's it. Okay, so. It's Doreen punching the leader. Also, it's kind of, you might think he just hit this parking meter, but it's actually her holding it with her tail and hitting him in the right uh, clavicle area. Oh, there's also the the silly effeminate guys in the background doing something somewhere. It's a, it doesn't matter. They're men. Um, so watch this. The squirrel says, if you're really so smart, the leader, and then Doreen says, then you'd know that Squirrel Girl and Tippy Toe will always defend the innocence of the world. No, no. So the leader is just apparently engaging in fist... What? Okay, so, so watch this. This is Ryan North. Ryan North is funny, according to Ryan North. And he needs you to know. He doesn't need you to know that he's funny. He needs you to know that he thinks that he's funny. This page inspired by Bob Dylan's 1965 hit, Subterranean Homesick Blues, in which he says, don't follow leaders, watch the parking meters. This is good advice, both for you, the reader, don't follow Hulk's gamut irradiated villain, the leader, and also for the character depicted on this page. Had he watched out for parking meters more dutifully, then he wouldn't have gotten hit by one just now. So I've said this before, and I've said this is very uh, levels of uh, screaming in my car. Um, I hate Ryan North. Like, I actually hate him. <laughs> There's something that is so obnoxious and, and uh, you know, the egotism of this. You are a generic hipster standing in line at Walmart, or Walmart, Starbucks, going to all the same Twitter pages, liking the same jokes, and it's just like, you sell 5,000 copies. Do you at least realize, hey, maybe I'm doing something wrong? Yes, I know Musk Elastic Mud this, but the whole Musk Elastic game is Marvel carves out, they have like five books, and they, they put, you know, Squirrel Girl there every single time. So that's always going to sell well. It's a captive audience, essentially. Um, so then we cut to, oh gosh, it, just everything goes on forever. When I originally started uh, reading this yesterday, because it took my free time over two days to finish it, because it's just excruciating, I got angry and I goes, you know what? Screw it. Screw it. I'm going to do a one hour video and I'm going to talk about every single thing wrong with it because there is so much wrong with it. I know I don't. Yeah, I don't want that. You don't want that. Let's just start off with a couple of things. So you draw characters in certain ways, you know? And you change them and it affects the story because they exist in the world. You know, it's a visual medium. Their looks matter. Um, and so Erica Henderson drew Squirrel Girl like this for like 38 issues. So we're going to have to assume that she's all her friends know her as like this kind of lumpy, you know, weirdly stocky individual. Now she's drawn as a kind of, I don't know, tomboy. This is a fairly big change. If you're drawing Peter Parker, you know, in one way, and all of a sudden he's gained or lost 50 pounds of muscle, or 50 pounds of fat, or he went from like a handsome guy to like a really ugly guy, that would be something. If all of a sudden you start drawing him like John Kerry, the senator, you know, 
like this stony face and like glowering. Like you'd be like, oh, it, are we going to factor in that Peter Parker now looks like a completely different person? And it, no, 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 no. It's just like nothing matters. So she has the same LOL so random. Um, and then, oh gosh, it just goes on forever. They're looking for this character brain drain. Oh my gosh, I only got here in a whole day yesterday. So she has this like um, very back pattingly diverse group of friends who are uh, all effeminate men. That's a woman. And then this is a new introduction. Apparently this wasn't diverse enough. Uh, two effeminate men of uh, indeterminate ethnicity and then you have, you know, most likely a lesbian black woman because it's a Marvel comic. So... There was a there was like one story where she liked a guy, but man, they forgot about that really quickly. <laughs> um, uh, and then we have this woman, uh, a woman of an unknown Earth ethnicity that has purple gray skin. Again, this is a purple sky. That's purple gray. Um, so then, oh, remember the science? Yes, women love the science. Yes, women love the science. Women. You will love the science, according to this passive-aggressive hipster right here. So then they start to teach you about steganography, except for they teach it in a way that is calculated to uh, bore and annoy every single age for different reasons. Um, a kid who's reading about this doesn't want to go through all this. It's just boring. A kid will literally turn the page and go, boring, and then, oh, Mm, that's boring too. Probably, oh, that's funny. She's eating a lot of food. And then, okay, I can't show all of it. You're welcome. <laughs> when copyright uh, uh, and DMCA uh, laws and rules work in everyone's favor. Um, so then they're solving a mystery, but it's incredibly annoyingly boring. Not targeted for the age group of this at all. If you're 8 to 10... It's going to be too much information told in the most boring way imaginable. Again, this is the egotism of Ryan North. Um, I'm really funny, but I'm like smart and quirky and people like me. Um, it's my Ryan North impersonation. Um, you have to assume when you're writing, you have to assume that not everyone likes you. And even the people who like you are like this close to be really being sick of you or just forgetting about you entirely. That happens all the time. I have a YouTube channel. I listen to it all the time. All of a sudden, bam, I haven't listened to it in six months. What happened? Well, you know, you liked it like less, less, less. And then you finally went below the threshold of even remembering that it exists. And that's something that happens to everyone. And you have to be constantly aware of that. And you have to try to work past this. So here's the thing that I actually like. So at one point, Doreen's... Uh, I mean, everyone, so I'll give an example of how everyone talks. It's going to be painful. Right. If I change 99,999 to 19,999, then those two numbers are 500% different. But if I change 99,999 to 99,991, that's a difference of only what? Less than one one hundredth of 1%? Exactly. And that least significant digit, Spy Mary, is where you are going to play. Thomas, I love you, but I am honestly kind of mad you did not inform me of the possibilities of becoming Spy Mary sooner. So stop me if I'm wrong, but it seems to be that Spy Mary, who is me? So yeah, it's like, it's so many layers of irony and sarcasm that no, I, I can't even tell if these people are human. Then... Doreen gets her um, uh, secret identity exposed and she has like a human reaction. She's shocked. She Instead of doing this cutesy pie talk, this cutesy pie, Joss Whedon, Scott Pilgrim, so ironic, you don't even know what... You gotta, you gotta go to a freaking doctor and get a scan. I don't know what emotions I actually have. They're always layered between three other fake ones. So she's just shocked. She goes... She did it. She blew up my life. And then they're trying to console her. And then she goes, uh, I wasn't done being Doreen yet. And I was like, what the hell just happened? This character, who pretty much everyone has grown to absolutely loathe, just had 
human emotions for one page out of 47 issues and I'm drawn in. What's gonna happen to her? And then we're going back to cutesy bootsy with the be the beat and the week and he's in the season amazing spider-man but he's written a completely different oh and if you think that wasn't bad oh my gosh now again i'm gonna flip this over it's got this you know in-house ad for a what is it for some joy wave um you know they got the scan code in dc what i'm trying to say is this is not a fake comic Again, this is a comic made for probably about 8 to 10 year old girls. There's a whole page right here. Three. And there's a, real, a reveal of the villains that she's recruiting. Do you want to read this? Does anyone want to read this? Does any child in the target age mark, you know, market want to read this? Who would want to read this? Ryan North, have you ever considered that you have to appeal to your reader and a potential reader? This isn't so far past arrogance. I think it's some sort of you know developmental delay. Like you didn't realize that other people are real. You know what I mean? It's like, um, I'm Ryan North. I'm like super fun, but um, I can be a little crazy. I mean, no, stop, stop, stop. What you are is a huge twat. Um, and uh, nobody likes you. <laughs> Get a little personal. Nobody likes your book. Um, this bit that you took, what have you been writing comics for? Five, six years full time? You did something and you didn't even realize you did it. You finally connected with a reader in a real way. By having a character have an actual normal human reaction to something. And then you immediately lost it. Uh, you know, <laughs> what race, what race is purple gray, honestly? Oh, I know. Asphyxiating, as, <laughs> asphyxiating, uh, uh, or in the process of being asphyxiated, um, Tamil? Like, is, is that, is that who turns purple gray? She seems to be breathing fine. She's, they're all happy. Men are super feminine. <laughs> man. Woman. Woman. Man. <laughs> uh, so anyway, thanks for watching. This book does not deserve respect. <laughs> it deserves nothing but mockery, but seriously, like, dude, Ryan North, dude, you gotta be pushing 40. Like, your comic book career is not you, you know, at a family gathering drawing some horrible, you know, drawing of an airplane, and then all of your relatives, they just have to say it's good because you're a kid. Like, this was absolutely awful. And don't tell me this was kid-friendly, or it's like, it's, you know, it's not really for you. It's not really for anyone. Um, so anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe. Make sure you're still subscribed. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna uh, bang the drum about the GoFundMe for the lawsuit. The, uh, the opposite team is steadfastly pulling every single stalling tactic in the world to run out the war chest. So don't let the war chest run out. You know this uh, this uh, lawsuit's about more than just me. It's about people being intimidated in the industry and the fear in these people and people turning down paying jobs because they're afraid of being attacked by people in the industry who do the attacking. So uh, uh, help me uh, uh, fight this, uh, push up against it. Um, so the link for the GoFundMe for the lawsuit is in the, the, the description. So is Jawbreaker's God King. That's still available. Oh, and I do think this, uh, so I told, I got overly excited about the secret project. So I was like, oh, let's have, let's try to have this done by uh, uh, the end of October. And the guy was like, whoa, chill. I don't, I can't even start drawing this for like two or three weeks. And it's like, why am I rushing this? Supposed to, I, I'm rushing it because I'm excited. I'm excited. So uh, it's not going to be the next one. It's going to be after Iron Sights 2, which is going to be done in October. 
So we'll launch Iron Sights 2 in October. Now I do have you know, permission to launch more than one uh, campaign at the same time. We'll see. I don't want to rush this. I want this to be a quality, quality project. Uh, it, it, I, we started Iron Sights 2 like at the beginning of this year, I think like February. And it's going to be done in October. It's going to be ready to print and ship in, I don't know, probably November. Um, so that one's going to be next. Um, and then uh, uh, today is all dedicated about getting that material to Ethan Van Skyver, all the reference he needs. He's been asking for it. I've been traveling. All of today is ded dedicated to uh, getting to that him. Getting that to him. Thanks for watching. Bye.